some things that want to entangle you and trap you from your destiny but somebody shout not today Satan in Jesus name. Have a little one that you desire to see grow in the things of God? Subscribe to Revive Nations Kids on YouTube for an exciting array of programs every week. RevivedNations.tv is now open to live participation to our services. God is a God who understands us more than your spouse. God understands you more than your own biological mother and father. God understands you like no other human being. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can we take 30 seconds to appreciate the Lord in this house? Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. By your mercy, we are not perished. By your grace, we are found standing. This God understands Moses. Because you see, Moses was not brought up as a Hebrew. Moses was brought up as an Egyptian. And Moses was brought among idols. Do you see that? Moses was brought up with frogs as gods. They worshipped flies. They worshipped river Nile. So you got to understand, Moses, as much as somewhere in the spirit, God was showing him that he's a Hebrew deep down in his heart, his sister would come and put stuff into his ears and tell him, you are not like everybody else. But the culture that he grew up in, this is so critical that you get this, the culture and the environment that he grew up in molded his perspective of life. So things that you and I would say, no, this is bad. He doesn't know it's bad. So when he runs away from his calling, when he runs away from his calling, he lands with a group of people, with among a family where there is a lot of idols in their house. There are a lot of idols. So he goes, Moses leaves Egypt and goes to the priest of Midian. What does a priest have in his house? Idols. He's the boss of all the idols and he runs the temple. He has floods of it. He walks into it and does not feel out of place. Now that's a problem. Can you imagine this? This is why I said this God that we serve. Oh, he understands us more than anybody. Majority of Pentecostals would have said, Moses, I, he can't be the savior. Look at this guy. He, he grew up among idols in Egypt for 40 years. Now he goes to Midian. 40 years, he is living with a priest who is not serving God. He is a priest of Midian among idols. And most of us Christians would have written him off. I said, this guy is scary. This guy is definitely a cult. How many of you are understanding what I'm saying? Because this guy has no problem there. Because if, if you ask Moses, he doesn't know the difference. He grew up among the stones. Right now he sees stones. It doesn't bother him. All he knows that there is a spark in my spirit that I cannot contain. There is a spark in my spirit. But the moment he enters the wrong covering, The voice dies down. The spark dies down. 
Because just a little while ago, when I was in Egypt, when the time of my calling came, listen to me carefully today, because today some entanglements will be broken in Jesus' name. Just a little while ago, when I was in Egypt, there was something that came over me. There was a mantle that began to manifest. There was a voice that was taking over. There was a sense of justice that was taking over me. There was a sense of righteous anger that was taking over me. I felt I had to kill something, bury something, start a new justice system. But right in the middle of that, fear took over me. Right in the middle of the manifestation of God's calling, I went from the right place and I entered a wrong covering. Under that covering, my passion died. Under that covering, the fire dies. Under that covering, the spark is no more. Just a few weeks ago, he wanted to clean up the entire system of Egypt and he was ready to go up against Pharaoh himself. But weeks later, there is something that causes your passion to die down. There is a covering you can come under that will kill your passion. Mandalorokosia. There is a covering of friends that you can enter. A group of friends, when they allow you into their clique, when they allow you into their group, they give you something in return. It's called acceptance. They say, we are allowing you into a group. They are covering you now. They're covering you with their love. They're covering you with affection. They're covering you. Be careful who covers you. Because they are able to quench the call of God that is inside of you. Some of you don't understand why you're no more passionate like before. Some of you don't understand why you don't run after the Lord anymore. Some of you don't understand where is the fire that used to burn inside of me. Where is the passion? Where is the love for God? Wrong coverings. Let me show you what is happening. Go to Exodus chapter 2. Exodus chapter 2 verse 16. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters and they came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. Verse 17. The shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up. <laughs> what is he doing? He's fresh coming from Egypt, right? His passion is still burning inside of him. Uh, his calling is to stand up. Although temporarily he's running away, but this thing is still not dead inside of me. So he stands up because that is what he's called to do. He's standing up. And then the next line says, he stood up and saved them. Now he's still functioning in his gift. He's still functioning in his calling. Except God didn't assign that to him. You are doing what looks right. But Moses, you were not sent to save them. You were sent to save your people in Egypt. My goodness. There is one such thing that feels right, but is not from the Lord. The, the thing that you feel peace about, but is not from the Lord. The thing that you say, this is advantageous for me, but is not from the Lord. There is one such thing that you will be appreciated for. This will even win you your afternoon meal. They will take care of you. They will celebrate you, but that is is not from the Be careful who celebrates you. Be careful who pumps you up. Be careful who compliments you. There are some blessings you have to say, no, thank you. I don't need even a lace from you because I want the glory to go to my God alone. Hey! 
there are some ministry calls that some of you need to say no to because i am not assigned to you it looks like a good door but it is not my door my goodness my goodness so he starts functioning no more in the location where god called him he starts functioning in another location to another group of people that were not called by his name and begins to save them begins to stand up for them because he's calling yeah 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 manto rozaka just because you are anointed does not mean that your anointing is for sale it is not for everybody mamro kosata i was teaching i was teaching a pastors and i told them if you are functioning in this prophetic grace you need to remember you're not an astrologer your gift is not for sale i don't prefer being invited i prefer to be sent by the lord there is a group of ministers that love receiving invitation but god is raising up a generation that prefer to be sent by the lord lato rabasia because their gift is not for sale when you begin to understand who you are nobody can hijack you when you begin to understand your identity in christ nobody can buy you with a compliment it doesn't matter who tells you whether they love you or don't love you you are solid like the rock of zion that cannot be moved because your identity is not in whether somebody shows you love or not your identity is not in whether somebody complimented your clothes or not your identity is not in group friends your identity is not in whether your peer group allowed you in to have the barbecue party your identity when it is rooted in christ you will look at very very beautiful seven daughters of the priest of midian and say god bless you bye bye <laughs> <laughs> oh because there are some things that want to entangle you and trap you from your destiny but somebody shout not today satan in jesus name Alamo Santa Namasia there is a thing that happens to somebody that has been rejected when you're rejected by somebody and you don't know who you are you are in great trouble Did you hear what I said? Yeah. When you are rejected by somebody and you don't know who you are, you are in great trouble. Because when somebody rejects you and you don't know who you are, you start looking around for somebody that accepts you. And believe me, Satan from the garden had the twisted tongue. He has a way of making you feel good. temporary pleasures that will condemn you eternally so be careful if you don't know who you are moses does not know who he is what he needed was a hebrew mentor that could tell him this is your boundary galabalo zeko banatia leko manauza i need somebody to tell me shut up You need a mentor that can tell you sit down. You need a mentor that can tell you a truth without being worried about your tides being stopped. A mentor who cannot be bought off with your offerings. Ah la cobra, you are blessed if you have a mentor like that. Moses doesn't know who he is, so he's pushed into the arm of a midianite priest and he falls in love with them he says my people they don't love me oh look god has given me a family that is going to accept you no brother this family is going to kill your promise it took you 40 years to come into your calling and now you will accept the love 
of somebody that is going to kill you for another 40 years. And some people kill you by feeding you every day. Some people kill you by showing love every day. This is not the love I want. I want tough love. I want the kind of love that is not afraid to tell me the truth. I want the kind of love that is not afraid to tell me the truth. Moses, you are a great hero. But you're all busy doing things that God has not called you to do. Look, let's, let's see what else he did. <laughs> this next line is going to blow you. Look at that. And he watered the flocks for them. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> because you see, the calling is calling him. He's supposed to be the shepherd to, for Israel. And what does the shepherd do? Water the flocks. <laughs> and he's in media. Watering the wrong flocks. And the next 40 years now, you're going to be stuck in watering the wrong flock. May God save you from this deception. This deception of friends that cover you, but they're not anointed to cover you. They are not sent by the Lord. How many of you understanding what I'm saying? A revivalist has to get used to the fact that you will be rejected by the very own people that God sends you for. A revivalist has to get used to the fact that he may have to flee from the very own location that he was sent to. And the revivalist has to get used to the fact that his only solace will be on top of the mount of God. A revivalist has to get used to the fact that probably his only friend will be the Lord. Verse 21. I, I'm scared of this verse. This verse makes me cry. And Moses was content to dwell with the priest of Midian. All of a sudden, he was done with the calling. He was done with his mission. He was done with his passion. Things that stilled him up doesn't still him up anymore. He calls it quit. He said, you know what? I'm just going to be happy with this brother. <laughs> the brother is happy because he was praying. Oh, he was praying to his idols. Gods, gods, I need a man. Seven girls. I need at least one man. Please send me one man. So the priest is celebrating. He's breaking coconuts in front of his idols. Gods have answered a man, a good-looking man from Egypt came. <laughs> <laughs> I was praying this man should be able to be a good shepherd and he came. I can. <laughs> Moses, Moses, what are you doing, my brother? Moses, what are you doing? What are you doing, sir? What are you doing? Being content to dwell in the wrong place. This is going to kill the fire of God inside you. Being content in the wrong place. Being content with the wrong individual. Being content in the wrong destination. Tonight I want you to look into your heart and say, what am I content with? What are the things that kill my passion? What friendships have killed the fire of God inside me? Uh, the reason why you are no more content in your calling 
is because now your content elsewhere. The reason why you're no more content at the door of the house of God, being the doorkeeper at the house of God, the reason why you're no more content dwelling in the house of God, the reason why you're no more content gazing into the beauty of his holiness, the reason why you're no more content inquiring in his holy temple is because somewhere down the line you got content with the wrong things. Some of you got content with the Medicare that Canada is offering. The Medicare has become your God caring for you. Some people are content with the wrong group of friends. They are now filling your heart with love. No more the Lord. Some people's contentment have come from their wealth. They are so blessed today that there is no more need to run after the Lord. There is no more need to run after the Lord. They are content. They are so blessed they have everything they need. They have fellowship that they craved for. The love they so needed, so desired in, in, in with their own people that they did not get. Now they get it with the wrong people. They're enjoying that so much that it is hard for them to come and say, Lord, I'm hungry for your presence. I'm hungry for your nearness. There was once a fire that so brightly shone in me. But that's no more to be found because my soul has become content with too many things around me. Unsettle me again. Dada. Dada. Dada, take away everything from my heart that has quenched the fire inside of me. Take away every friend that we have put our solace in. Every friend that gives us the wrong affirmation and love that we should have only gotten from you, we take our eyes back to you, Lord Jesus. You are my everything. You are my all. I want you to tell the Lord, I don't want anything in my life, Lord, that... I'm so content that I go out of the location of fire. The Lord is about to introduce you to a kind of fire that you and I, we have never encountered before. I can smell it. It's not far. My young people, are you listening? Yeah. I have to repeat that. One more time. It won't be far. God is about to release an unprecedented fire upon those that have been waiting upon him. But before you are introduced to that fire, today you have to cry to the Lord. And you have to tell the Lord, there are locations that I have become entangled with in my life that has taken my attention from you, that has taken my first love. There are friends, there are people, there are things, there are materials, there are logics that have killed my fire. Lord, I don't want this to steal me from my encounter that is waiting for me. There is 
an encounter. La Rosia Tenebenia. People of God, I want you to know whatever encounters you've already experienced in the last few days will be shadows. Distance is not a barrier to God. RevivedNations.tv is now open to live participation to our services. 